Joining me right now to talk more about all of that is Oklahoma Senator James Lankford. Senator, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you. Good to see you. Glad to be with you. So I, I want to ask you about the Iran deal and the implications. But first, let me get your reaction to President Trump's predecessor, President Obama, slamming his decision on the Iran nuclear deal. You know, I, I can understand that. Uh, President Obama was worried about losing his legacy uh, un, in this uh, agreement, in this change. Uh, I don't think this is a loss of legacy for him in that sense. He was able to hold Iran back for a couple of years. Uh, but quite frankly, the deal was bad from the beginning. And many of us, myself included, said for a very long time, President Obama can make an executive deal with them, but it doesn't really hold the force of all of America until it actually comes through Congress. But he was afraid to bring this deal to Congress because he knew it wouldn't pass through Congress. We saw the gaps in the missile testing. We saw the gaps in the 10-year sunset. We saw the gaps in the uranium swaps that are in there. So there were major problems from the very beginning that were identified. So he just made a deal, one president to another leader in Iran, which can obviously be changed by the next president of the United States. Right. But like, why? I mean, you look at some of these deals. Why is America always at the losing end? And you're right. You make a really good point. Had this been brought to the Congress, this would never have passed. Right. It, it would not have passed because many people saw the bad deal from the very beginning. Again, anything that sets up a 10 year process for Iran to get to a nuclear weapon is a bad deal. It allowed them to do missile testing. That's a bad deal on it. And it gave them the two things they really needed. They had the know-how, clearly Benjamin Netanyahu has released out in the last couple of weeks, that they were advancing towards a nuclear weapon with research. They had the know-how. They needed two things. They needed more time to be able to finish the delivery vehicle, a missile, and they needed more money to be able to finish their research. This deal gave them the two things they needed the most, time and money, and that's the problem. And quite frankly, yeah. for President, Ob uh, President Trump, him stepping up now to say we need to be able to renegotiate this now rather than waiting years puts the United States in a better position for a negotiation rather than putting Iran in a better position for negotiation. So so what's next, Senator? That's the next question that everyone's asking. You know, wh where do we go now? And is there a backup plan? Uh, should nobody else follow the U.S.? Well, I would, I would think most people will follow the U.S. on it because within 180 days, uh, countries will make a decision whether they want to do business with Iran or do business with the United States. And I would expect most companies in most countries would want to do business with the United States more than Iran since we're 25 percent of the world's economy. So that's the decision they've got to make within the next six months. So this gives them a little bit of time to be able to make those considerations, be able to put their house in order. I would hope in the meantime, Iran would come back to the negotiating table. They have said publicly over and over again, we don't want a nuclear weapon. We're not going to go towards a nuclear weapon. This is very simple. Then step away from your missile testing, step away from your research, and do a real negotiation to be able to finish this out. If they don't want a nuclear weapon, fine. Then this should be an easy negotiation for them. Wow, that's really interesting. So you do think that maybe Iran rethinks this and comes back and asks for a different deal? I would hope that they would. That's the best solution that would come yeah. out of this, quite frankly. We got to. We got. I'm going to ask you about Gina Haspel. I want to ask about Secretary Pompeo. He is now in North Korea, working on uh, this upcoming meeting between the president uh, and, and Kim Jong Un, as well as releasing the three Americans detained by Pyongyang. This all coming ahead of that historic summit. What's your take on Mike Pompeo in North Korea and what can be accomplished? Second trip for him to go back to North Korea to do the advance work for this. I think it's obviously exceptionally important. Before the two leaders of North Korea and the United States actually meet. You have high level advanced meetings. This is what this is. The key thing that North Korea could do to send a good message prior to this is to release the three hostages that they have that are United States citizens. They've been holding hostage in labor camps, some of them for a very long time. Release those individuals. That's a goodwill gesture. Quite frankly, Turkey needs to do the same thing. Turkey is holding some Americans hostages right now, trying to have leverage. We need the same action from Turkey that we need from North Korea. But it's, it's a positive thing that, uh, that uh, Mike Pompeo continues to be able to advance these negotiations. We need it for the benefit of the region and the world. Senator, CIA officials are now throwing their support behind Gina Haspel, uh, President Trump's nominee to head the CIA ahead of her confirmation hearing today before the Senate Intel Committee. What are your expectations? She's expecting to face some tough questions, right, about her role well, in the agency's inter interrogation techniques right after the 9-11 attacks. Yeah, every person that faces this kind of role should face tough questions. I have no issue with tough questions, but let's let the facts rise to the surface. 
rather than just accusations on this. We've had the leadership of the CIA from multiple administrations, Republican and Democrat, including President Obama's leadership for the CIA and the, and the Director of National Intelligence, supporting Gina Haspel. She's been a career servant in the CIA for more than three decades. She has a stellar record. The areas that are being reviewed right now that some people are making accusations were reviewed by the Obama administration, the Department of Justice, the Inspector General. They found no issue with Gina Haspel, and any of her actions were inconsistent with the law or entirely appropriate. So th this has all been reviewed before. This is old news in many ways. She is an excellent career mm -hmm. professional, and it's about time uh, that someone from the CIA comes through the ranks to be able to lead the CIA. So do you think she'll be she'll see success today or I mean Democrats are pushing the CIA to declassify documents about her role even as Republicans are hitting back against this. Well, it's interesting. Uh, as a member of the Intelligence Committee and members of the Intelligence Committee, both Republican and Democrat, have access to those documents they're saying should be declassified. They can see it. They can read it. I'd encourage them to be able to go through those documents. She's put quite a bit on the table. In fact, an unprecedented amount has been put out from the CIA for individual senators to be able to read and go through. So I, mm -hmm. I'm not for declassifying everything. There's a reason things are classified. But all of us as members right. of the United States Senate have top secret clearance. We should be able to go through it and evaluate it and see the facts. And, Senator, real quick on this rescission uh, package, Capitol Hill, uh, Congress reviewing the White House's uh, rescission package, which wants to cut $15.4 billion on spending. Will you be successful in that? I, I hope he is, actually. The, many of these rescissions elements are areas that are taken up each year by the Congress to look at old spending that was that was allocated but was never used. Some of this is from loan programs that were, have not been used since 2011 or 2012. That money is still sitting there. It'll often get grabbed and be respent in some places. It'd be better for the economy to just do that uh, for deficit reduction to do a rescission on it. All right. We'll be watching all the developments. Senator, good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Good to see you as well. Thanks.